Grant, it's great speaking with you, my friend. Before we start this interview, because it's something we do every year, and it's something that CBC does for, I would say, not just for the music community, but for the continuation of great music and great artists getting out there, not just in Canada, but around the world. I got to ask, how are you holding up, my friend, throughout uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, as we all have? You know, I'm, you, I, you've got me here in my home office. I've got the, you know, the microphone right here. I've got my, this is it, right? Like this, <laughs> just like you are. Um, I, I'm holding up. I've, uh, like you, I've had my first uh, shot of vaccine, which is reassuring. And uh, I even got it uh, two days before the prime minister got it. So, uh <laughs> You know, uh, it's it, just like everybody else. We're just my wife and my kids and I were just trying to make it work and get through it. And, you know, the, the launch of Searchlight has actually been a real uh, positive. It's a good news story. It's something that musicians can take part in safely. Uh, it doesn't involve any sort of immediate live performance or any sort of immediate group performance. So it's actually been a, a really fun launch. Let's talk about Searchlight because um, to me, again, it's something that's really important in the Canadian music industry. But do you think it's even more important now because the shutdowns, because oh, yeah. there are no venues out there for people to perform? People are trying to do live streaming and stuff like that. And it's so hard for folks for the last 13, 14 months to get their music and getting their names out there. To me, this time around, Searchlight so important yeah it, it, it's been obviously a disaster for the gig economy and a disaster for for musicians in general and and like you and me many of those musicians are figuring out new ways to make it work but yeah uh, searchlight is a great example of being able to uh, engage with your community again you know like say hey i am entering my song my favorite, you know, the best song I've written, I'm entering it into Searchlight 2021. And here's how we can all work together on this, you know, so it is a great opportunity for a musician to, to kind of let their fan base know like, hey, I'm still here and I'm doing this and we can do this together. And there's a whole, you know, it's a collective thing. It's right across Canada. And so, yeah, that that is a real uh, positive and uh, it's nice to see that so many, we have had a record number of uh, entries so far in Searchlight. And also our prizes this year are very much geared, uh, not so much to live performance anymore, but uh, geared very much to just um, helping, let, let's put it in three ways, helping, launching, sustaining, and fulfilling four ways uh, a music career. So, you know, again, to, to realize not be tone deaf as to what's going on out there you're not seeing the prize involving a package tour or live showcase performances or anything like that it's very, very much geared more towards helping the artists through this time period now there may be some musicians out there who are watching this and are going searchlight why have i never heard of this what exactly are these guys talking about what is searchlight and again how does this great event i'll call it an event but um, how it helps the community. Yeah, well, Searchlight has been going for many years uh, at CBC and at CBC Music, and it is uh, our annual hunt for Canada's best undiscovered musical talent. And this year, the contest is bigger than ever because for the first time ever, Searchlight has brought on a title sponsor. So the best way I can explain this is like, say, the Giller Prize, which is our national prize for books, that full title is called the Scotia Bank Giller Prize. And guess who provides the prize? You know, it's often the title sponsor. And so for the first time again ever, we have brought on a title sponsor. So this year, the official title of Searchlight is CBC Music's Toyota Searchlight 2021. Wow. So Toyota Canada has come on board and has expanded our prizing greatly and has done all sorts of things uh, that are allowing us, for many, many years, we, we would go through this marathon of Searchlight, which is a contest with several different tiers in it. There's the starting date, the, you know, entering, 
then there's the voting period with your audience, then there's the top 100, then there's the top 10, then there's the winner. There's always only been one winner, but there's been some incredible runners up that have gone on to do things like win Junos and have amazing careers, international careers. But those runners up would often go pretty much unrecognized when we would wrap up the contest. We, it would all be about the winner, like say last year's winner, Shawnee Kish. So this year with the new prizes and with the title sponsor, we have for the first time been able to spread that around nice. and we are for the first time ever going to have a grand prize winner and we are going to have four runners up because usually Bravo. Our, our top 10 is, you know, gold uh, to up, you know, it's kind of like pick any one of them. And it's always been difficult for me uh, to see those other nine or the, that other, those other four in the top five kind of just go, well, that's it. And so now the top five will all receive prizes. See, I've said this for years, man. I, I'm envious of you being able to do this. And I'm not envious of you having to do this and making yeah. those those extremely tough choices. What are some of the names, if you remember some of the names who folks would probably know yeah, who sure. have uh, been in the contest, whether they've won or been runner ups or whatever? Yeah, well, I just mentioned Shawnee Kish. So she is an amazing two-spirit Mohawk artist, pop artist, who has been writing in Nashville and splits her time kind of in between Ontario and Alberta and Nashville. And she has a absolutely sizzling new single out now called I Got It Bad that is charting. And uh, at CBC... It has cracked the top 10 of the wow. CBC top 20, which is the national Canada's only national chart. And so that's really great to see other past winners. I remember uh, from a few years ago, uh, an amazing artist from Vancouver, one named Desiree Dawson and, and oh, her single yeah. uh, is called just fine. And that was her winning song. And to this day, that song, which carries a really positive message, you will hear it placed in TV shows and movies all over the place. Another really great runner up from a few years ago was Isque, another uh, indigenous artist who uh, has had a lot of success at the Junos. Uh, the Dead South from Regina, a really, really hard touring string band. They've got the hats and they've got these dance moves and everything. It's, Kind of, they kind of look like kind of an Amish string band, but they're they're really kick ass. They uh, just won the Juno for Roots Traditional Group of the Year, and they came in like third or fourth in Searchlight a few years ago. And then one other band I'll mention that has done incredibly well uh, internationally, like toured all over the world. They came in about I'd say definitely top ten of Searchlight in their year. I think we're going back to 2017, the Jerry Cans. You're and they're kidding. from the Kaluit Nunavut. And they combine uh, a rock sound with traditional throat singing and Inuktitut. And they'll do things like they have an incredible cover of the Tragically Hips uh, Ahead by a Century. And they travel, and when you could travel and tour before the shutdown, they were doing things all over the world. So those are a few examples of artists that uh, have either won or have been in the runners up category of Searchlight in past years that have gone on to just amazing careers. Because CBC, of course, is the host station for the Juno Awards this year. Will any of the Searchlight folks be able to connect with any of the events going on with the Junos as we lead up to music's biggest night? Yeah, I mean, that is all uh, what we call... Um, I forget the exact terminology, but it's all uh, it's it's it depends on the COVID regulations. Mm. So part of the prize pack involves the Junos. So, you know, I remember our prize winner from a couple of years ago, Shope, the Nigerian Canadian uh, R and B soul artist from Toronto, really great guy, really great performer. You know, he was all set to go uh, as part of his prize to go to the Junos in Saskatoon in March of 2020. And of course, uh, his, his yeah, I mean, he was, I think, literally at the airport and his flight was canceled because the event was canceled. And so 
Shawnee, same. Uh, our winner from a few years ago, Aquaculture, who has also continued to do really, really well. He did make it to the Junos. And uh, so that is still part of the prize to go to the Junos, to take part in Juno Week, to take part in the, in the Juno uh, activities and the Juno Fest. But we have to wait and see, you know, what is going to be allowed and what isn't going to be allowed. Agriculture. I interviewed the boys uh, when I was over at the Junos. Uh, so I had a great time talking to them. And yeah, last year I was also on that plane, got oh. off, had to get a ticket to fly back. Oh, it man, was, must have been it was, chaos. it was chaos, but I'll tell you something. And it cost me money, of course, but I will tell you, it's something like you say to yourself, but you were part of history on something, yeah. you know, you landed and there were those big words, Juno awards canceled. And you're like, oh. what? So and you then, only, you only found out when you got on the ground in Saskatoon. We actually found out for sure when we were on the plane, I would say maybe an hour before landing, because there was rumor beforehand, yeah. but people were going, no, they wouldn't shut it down. This is a European thing. Uh, and when we landed, that's when we knew for sure. And literally, he probably did the same as I did. Walked off the plane, walked over to the kiosk and said, need a plane ticket back immediately because he knew everybody was going to rush. And yeah, flew back. And I, the only thing I would say for thank goodness, it's cold in Saskatoon, man, at that yeah, time of the year. I mean, was that a, like, was there huge lineups? Was it easy to get back? For me, it was because I literally, it was off the plane. The kiosk was just setting up. And I got my ticket, the small group of who I was with together, uh, some June Award nominees. We just went over there, got our tickets, and we waited. Wow. For some people, it was tougher because that's when the line started to build up. Yes. And then some people who were in Saskatoon who found out now literally had to shut down where they were, get themselves repacked and everything else. So, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, but again. It's a story that I can talk about yeah. for the rest of my life, you know, yeah, for sure, for sure. and, and somebody who wins this, that's something that they, it's bragging rights for them too, in a lot of ways too, because yeah. this really is a boost to their careers. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, our prize pack this year involves a worldwide in, uh, distribution deal for the searchlight winning song, as well as the runners up through play MPE, because the question I'm asked the most is, from artists that over my 20 plus years in the business is how do I get my song played on the radio? And uh, that's a complicated answer uh, and it's not an easy answer and it's different for almost everybody. But one of the main ways to do it is you go through a servicing agent essentially. And so Play MPE, which is a Canadian company, is one of the biggest music distributors in the world when it comes to getting songs to radio and they work with some of the biggest artists in the world down to emerging artists so uh, that answers that question that artists always ask me and we wanted to involve that in the prizing again nothing to do with covid it's totally uh, it avoids all of that and we're because we're talking about the radio and then another part of our prizing is a five-day recording residency at the National Music Center, Studio Bell in Calgary. So that hasn't changed and we can do that safely and you still have access to the, you know, 3000 instruments that they have in there that are all vintage and really incredible. And then also uh, you get a, a placement in the Allen Slate Juno Masterclass that's in Toronto. So that is the, what's considered the top echelon of music education in Canada. That's where you learn from the best of the best of basically what you need in your foundation to be able to build your career up and up and up. And then uh, there's also a uh, Toyota prize pack uh, prizes as well that include uh, new music instruments, more studio time and more of those song distribution deals. So I think that is pretty much covering the prize pack for this year. That's amazing. So, you know, some people are listening to this and they're going, can I still get involved? Can I still submit? Can they yeah. still submit? And if so, up till when? Yeah, I mean, we are the, the, the for the first time ever also uh, Searchlight is bilingual, the sites in French and English. But really, I mean, you can submit a song in French, you can submit a song in Cree, you can submit a song really in any language. And it's also open to any genre. We just care that we are 
hearing the best possible song. So here is how you enter Searchlight 2021. Everyone's on YouTube. We recognize that it's a universal tool for musicians. So we're asking that you upload your best original song to YouTube. Chances are it's probably already there. And then you just take that simple YouTube link. You go to cbc.ca slash searchlight and you enter your song right there. And that is all it takes. You have until May 3rd. So that's like just over, depending on when you air this, that, you know, about a week from now. So there's still some time. And that's all we need is your best original song. Once you get to cbc.ca slash searchlight, you enter in the name of the artist, you know, your hometown, the a little bit of a bio, that whole thing, maybe a photo, I think. And you're you're in. And I would say that if you're hesitant or on the fence, I would say just like the vaccine, just go for it, you know, uh, because you never know in the case of Searchlight, you never know what's going to happen. Like aquaculture, he kind of did it on a, a whim and you know, some artists will engage their fan base the whole time. Like, hey, I'm I'm at stage one of Searchlight, or you know, I'm I'm at I'm in I'm into the top 100 of Searchlight. Help me keep it going. Aquaculture was more kind of standoffish, which is totally fine. And he rose through the ranks of Searchlight based on, just on the strength of of his song. The judges were picking up on it, and it went up and up and up and up and up. And I remember um, one of the judges that year was one of the guys from a tribe called Red who really championed aquaculture. And aquaculture ended up winning the whole thing. And I remember uh, calling aquaculture to tell him he had won and he was in total shock <laughs> and then started screaming and crying and running around the room and all this stuff because his was a story of redemption, which you probably remember from a few years ago, you know, aquaculture, one of the most amazing stories of any searchlight winner. He was in prison, That's right. you know, five years ago and he won, I don't know, two or three years ago. So he was, while he was in prison for, I think some armed robbery or something like that, he learned how to play guitar because they try to, you know, get, he was also got into being in getting into a, uh, plumber apprenticeship, which is where the aquaculture name comes from. And so somebody in, in behind bars taught him how to play guitar. And he swore that once he got out of prison, he was going to be a plumber and be a musician. And he is now a licensed plumber in the city of Halifax. And he ha won Searchlight. So I mean, that is a, a heck of a return to society. And he didn't even he, he had no idea his song was rising through the ranks. Dreams can come true, my friend. My friend, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you okay, for what thanks, CBC Rudy. does for music. Thank you for continuing the searchlight. And thank you for a lot of musicians out there for giving hope throughout this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for keeping this going, man. And thank yeah, you for well, being a champion for this. Yeah, and thank you for what you do for the for Canadian music and the Canadian music community too. You're incredibly consistent and you've been doing this for a long time with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of passion. So kudos to you as well, Rudy. We got love for it, man. Thank you again.